Hello YouTube, Tom coming at you. We're doing a video today to explain the mason jar hydroponic lighting. To get the right lighting to make your lettuces and short-term plants grow well uh, and not be leggy and be all stems and no leaves. So we're going to look at color temperature, we're going to look at lumens, we're going to talk about CRI. If you don't know what any of those are, then you ought to stick around. Let's go. So in this first picture, lighting temperature guide. You see that on the left end, it's a kind of an orangey, yellowy color. And then all the way on the right is a, uh, a blue. And that is temperature from low to high. Low Kelvin light temperature is yellowy orange on the bottom. Goes through um, reds. And you have to Keep in mind that isn't a bulb that puts out a single color. It's the the light temperature. So it is tinted a little bit differently. In general, with lettuce, you want the highest Kelvin color bulb you can. So that's going to be the, the K number on the front of the package. So I think this next picture clears that up just a little bit. So you see over on the left is the 1000 and over on the right is the 10,000. That is the light temperature of all of those. All right, on this picture, these are the GE 48 inch garage and basement lights. This one is a real clear example of what we're looking for. We really only want two numbers. Once we figure out the size of the bulb, then we have to uh, establish what the, the light temperature is that we want. So this one I've got circled in red, the 4100K, that is its light temperature. And then up to the right, or I have circled the 2900 lumens. So lumens is sort of like brightness, but not anything to do with color. So I would equate it more to wattage. You know, back in the day when you went down the light bulb aisle and you had to pick out a light bulb, you decided what wattage it was and you left. That's all the choice we had. It was pretty simple and the, they didn't have a whole aisle. Now you have a whole aisle. You can pick what temperature color you want. You can pick this and that and the other LED fluorescent, incandescent. So it basically just muddled it down. Let's clear this up just a little bit. So that 2900 lumens, 4100K, garage and base. So when we go back to our other picture here, color just over this 4000 mark. So it's pretty much white. We see the 800 lumens and we see that it has a color temperature of 5000K. So we find another daylight 5000K. Okay, now we're getting into a couple of other things. This one it has 2,850 lumens, uses 32 watts, has a CRI of 81, and is 6,500K light temperature. Uh, we're back with a 48-inch utility light that has 1,800 lumens and a color temperature of 4,100. Marketed by the same company that has the same light temperature, but this is a brighter bulb but not really because it's still 4100K. So it doesn't matter what kind of fixture you have, you probably find a bulb that's gonna fit your needs. So this one happens to be a 12 inch circle. The tube is an inch and an eighth. The CRI color rendering index is 79. It has 1,570 lumens and a color temperature of 6,500K. So that would be a bulb that I would definitely put over lettuce. So we go through the rest of these, you'll notice the lumens, the temperature, those are the two that we really want to focus on. I said that we would talk about CRI. So I have a definition for you that I'm going to read right now. A useful measure of a light source's color characteristics is color rendering index, CRI. In general terms, CRI is a measure of a light source's ability to show object colors realistically or naturally compared to a familiar reference source. A CRI of 100 represents the maximum value. Lower CRI values indicate that some colors may appear unnatural when illuminated by the lamp. Incandescent lamps have a CRI above 95. Cool white fluorescent lamps have a CRI of 82. However, fluorescent lamps containing rare earth phosphors are available with CRI values of 80 and above. That cleared that right up, didn't it? Not really. There we go. This one's simple. It just tells you how many lumens, what color temperature, or what temperature color. LEDs? No, these are compact fluorescents because they have mercury in them. They are warm. They're way down on the Kelvin chart. This is 2000 
700 then 900 lumens so that's not much of a bulb especially when they're cold fluorescents when they're cold not so much 48 inch active spaces same company as we've looked at two other 48 inch lights from it has 2,900 lumens, pretty bright, and its color temperature is 6,500K. So I'd say that kind of fits our bill. Utilitech 4 Light Shop Light. These are sold at uh, the Orange Big Box Hardware Store. Uh, these are the bulbs, or the fixtures that I actually use. Um, I've had good luck with them. I do make some changes to it, but I like these fixtures. They work for me. All right. Probably as clear as mud, but we'll sort it out. Okay, 32 watt, 6,500K. This is the bulb that I personally use. Um, I actually have eight of these over my hydroponic system. So you can kind of see there, it's a four foot bulb. And what do I do to these to make them more efficient is I take out four screws. I take out this screw, there's another one just like it on the opposite side, that screw, and two more on the other end. I take those out, that's before the bulbs are in, and the reflector, I take that right off. I use a little bit of spray adhesive, I spray the adhesive on, and then there's a mylar there. That is actually a emergency blanket. I got at a tag sale. Uh, it reflects the light off itself again and again. So that's what I personally use. These The fixture itself is 50 bucks. So it's not for the faint of heart. It certainly isn't free. So let's go over a couple of things that won't cost quite as much. All right, pretty much everybody's got one of these in their house. It's just a standard uh, table lamp, plugs into the outlet 110, screw a bulb in the top, and then you can use something along this line. This was in the truck and it's just a sunshade. It has the mylar coating on it. This one's kind of beat up a little bit, but if you wrap that around there, you could definitely set a couple of mason jars around there and have an okay light. Another way to do the same thing without that mylar shade is to hot glue or otherwise attach that mylar coating from the emergency blanket. Find those at Walmart online, tons of places. Glue that to that and I bet you could fit a ring of mason jars all the way around that, maybe a half a dozen, and let it rip. It should be at least adequate. It reflects the light. You're giving it the right temperature light. Make sure you're giving it enough of that light. All right, after I did that last little segment, I noted that these jars would be way too low to get a great amount of light. So that's almost a second mason jar up for that to be right by where the bulb is. So in this case, you really want the light as close to the plant as possible. I wouldn't stack your mason jars, but I do have a box here. So I've got the plants where the plants would be on top of the mason jars right next to where the bulb is. So that would work out very well. So I got one more back here. Pardon the dust, they're gonna be looking for this in the barn. This is just, this is a brooder light actually. I bought it Tractor Supply. They have, they call them utility lights if you wanna buy them at like Walmart. Any hardware store would have them. It has this handy clip. Squeeze the clip and attach it to something. The inside, if this one was not quite so chickeny, still would have a nice reflective surface on the inside. But being it doesn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have any hesitation putting some uh, adhesive on the inside of that and attaching that emergency blanket to it and kind of draping it over the plants. Uh, I think that would be a great solution to the problem as well. So there we go. We have the jars on top of the box beside the lamp so that the plants end up at the same height as the bulb. The plants should almost be touching the bulb. Not quite touching, but almost. Um, they really need that much of a direct light when you're using artificial light. If you look at the end of my other video, you see the, the pictures where the bulbs are are hanging down so low. It looks like you're growing some illegal substance when you have them down that low. It's like you're hiding them. Um, but that is what the plants need. If your lettuce is getting leggy, then you need to get your lights closer or add another bulb or change your light temperature. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this and see what exactly I end up with. <laughs>